welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. I'm very excited today. We're doing some cozy, spooky fall vibes, starting first with a vlog from meeting up with Stephanie Canada and Christina, who I will link their channels down below. There's some friends that I've made on YouTube and met in real life a few times. So recently I went down to Portland to meet up with Stephanie. I also just love Portland. I grew up going to Portland every summer and I wanted to take you along as we do a bunch of fabric shopping as well as some vintage shopping and looking at some spooky houses and fall things because Stephanie doesn't get to experience full fall in Florida the way I do here in Seattle. First we're gonna start I have about five minutes of fabric store and fall footage for you before we're gonna, then gonna hop into a haul of what I brought back from that trip. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into it. We will kick off the blog portion of this video with a tour around my favorite fabric store in Portland. This is Mills End. Overall, this is a giant fabric warehouse that has everything you could need to either quilt, upholstery, or make garments. One of my goals in the next year is to actually have a list of projects I want to do and come here to pick up the supplies for it because they have about everything you could need for any project. They have a whole bridal section. They have a whole costume section. They also have tons of wools, silks, including silk stretch, which is a really, really beautiful. If you haven't ever felt a silk stretch, I highly recommend it as well as of course cottons rayons and everything else one day I want to actually come here with a plan instead of willy-nilly buying whatever I want but if you're ever in Portland this is one you definitely have to check out after that we headed to this Pendleton store which I think is like kind of almost like an outlet or Pendleton woolen mills it's where they actually sell the fabric they make things with so it has like all their off cuts it also has a ton of fabric on the bolts and things like that so again if you're ever in Portland you absolutely have to stop here. There are so many beautiful, beautiful wools that you can't really get anywhere else, not even on their website. And they're pretty good prices. I think the most expensive wool I bought was $20 a yard. If you're going to buy Pendleton wool, this is the place to buy it. These here in this row though were all over a hundred as they should be. These are really beautiful. I was absolutely in love with the rainbow one. Next up, we happened to head on to an estate sale and this estate sale was pretty wild. It was absolutely packed with clothes and books and dishes and everything else. This house was definitely kind of like hoarder house level and it had this giant horse in the living room and the bathrooms were all full of things. I did pick up some stuff here, which I'll show you at the end of the video, but overall this estate sale was almost too overwhelming for me to pick through. Next day was spooky day, where we were gonna do some spooky focused activity, first starting with this spooky antique mall. Look at how cool this is. Their front display windows were phenomenal and really set the mood. This antique mall was really superb in what it had in it with both a good range of pricing and vendors. And I loved the display of this teacup as well. Of course, there were plenty of other things that I saw in this mall that I really enjoyed. I love a good antique mall. And I just think, especially like this up above view, this antique mall is just particularly aesthetic. So I really enjoyed that. And I will show you what I picked up here. Next up was walking around and enjoying these spooky houses. This one I thought was really fun. It was a ton of like actual little statues. I am not a huge inflatables fan actually. I really love stuff more like this. Or even houses like this where the decorations are a lot more subtle. And then we walked down the main haunted street, which you can see that really cute bride and little ghost dog here. And then there was a whole little fun wedding set up over here for the skeletons. And I just thought this had tons of humor and was just really really fun and again I just really prefer these solid pieces to the like inflatables. I mean the groom and the coach it's just it's all so good. I enjoyed it so much. A plus on decorations for me on this house. This house here was hilarious. From my understanding, you could actually get married at it. So funny. I think they had like an officiant. You want to get married in that tent back there, surrounded by spooky themed stuff. I absolutely adored this skeleton holding the groom. I thought it was so fun. And I, I just thought this house was definitely a hoot. This is a zombie house, which I'm not gonna lie, I am not hugely one for zombie themed things, but I did like this one. I thought it was done really cleverly. Admittedly, I think it's I like the blue flowers popping out of the ground with these zombies. Here we have a great little skeleton fishing scene with a little skeleton mermaid in the net 
and I thought this was very fun. Next up, we have this giant Grim Reaper house, which was really fun. We have the skeleton up in red. But overall, I just really liked how there were skeletons like hanging off the roof and things like that in this house. I thought it was really fun. And after this, we headed back to the hotel to meet up with Christina. It is the next morning and we have some really fun, spooky weather here. The trees are looking beautiful and we have some good mist, which is perfect because we're headed up to a mansion on a hill. This is the Pitak Mansion in Portland and we arrived here to take some fun and cute photos, both together and solo. And we also got a thorough walk around the grounds looking at the leaves before heading in to view the mansion itself. Of course, the grand stairwell was absolutely beautiful. I also adored the music room, which had the like silver ceiling, so that way it feels bigger and like reflects really well. Also, every room here had a view. And again, I am appreciating the grand stairway this time for above. And again, I just love these windows here. They are absolutely stunning. This is another room I adored with the sewing machine, the great views, and the little circular alcove. I'm a sucker for a turret. And then after that, we left the mansion and headed into Portland to do a little bit of thrifting. Our first thrifting stop, and the only I'm going to show on camera, is Scraps PDX. Highly recommend stopping in this if you're crafty and in Portland. This is a big creative reuse center. We, of course, focused on the fabric and the vintage themed things, but there is everything you could look for here. I will show you what I got here, which is actually, I think, nothing in the fabric section. I did get a couple vintage things, though, so don't you worry. After Christina left, Stephanie and I went to look for a beautiful fall setting and we found one here. It is absolutely stunning in this park, a beautiful view over the city, and the sunshine was absolutely beautiful. I mean, this scene was a perfect way to end the day before I woke up and headed out myself the next morning. All right, you've seen all the footage. Now I'll show you what I got from all the different things in that footage. First up, I'm gonna just go through what we got at the estate sale. The first things first, I got a couple of sets of candles. I know nothing that exciting, but birthday candles are something if I can buy secondhand, I really prefer to. And buying them at an estate sale is my ideal part of trying to be a little bit environmentally better is waiting until I come across things that are secondhand. These were about $2 for the whole thing. And then the other thing that I picked up secondhand that's been on my list for a while, it's just a whole bunch of nails. I use nails a lot. It's nice to have a ton of different sizes on hand and they had them at the estate sale. And again, if I can buy it secondhand and avoid buying new, I'm always gonna do that. Now on to more exciting estate sale things. One thing I'm really excited about is I bought this parasol. I've been wanting a parasol like this for a very long time. And even better, this one is purple. I really prefer being in the shade, so this will be great for summer for me. And it is absolutely stunning. I mean, look at this, and it is hand-painted. Super beautiful. I picked it up for $9, which might be a little expensive for picking it up secondhand. But again, this is something on my list that I didn't really want to buy brand new. Next up, I have these jade grapes. I have been looking at jade grapes on Etsy for a very long time. They're super expensive though, so I've never picked them up. They're usually $50 plus. I actually regret not buying more of these. They had six or seven bunches, but I just didn't really want to drop a ton of money in that moment. This was $24, which is a good price on these, and I really liked the coloring and the shape because they're pink. I do wish I picked up maybe two other bunches now in retrospect, but I had already spent so much money on fabric, which you'll see in a second, that I didn't really want to spend more money on jade fruit. I also picked up this pair of bananas, which were $18. I knew this was a really, really good price for jaded fruit. So I am happy with my decision and I think it was the right decision to not pick up more. Even though I'm a little sad, I left some of that behind, but that wraps up all I got at the estate sale. Everything else I'm going to show you is gonna be for sewing and crafting purposes. I am first gonna start with what I picked up at Scraps because we have some not as exciting craft things. Um, I got some clear glaze for my pottery group. I also got a bunch of different bias bindings. There's some different colors in here that I don't have. The next thing, oh, hopefully I can get these out. These have two different purse handles on them that are nice and old and clacky. I mean, listen to that sound. I picked these up for $4. I very much have the desire to make some bags, although I have not acted on that desire yet, but I thought these handles were really great for that. 
maybe that'll be an upcoming sewing project next year. Then the other thing I found two patterns. I found a pair of, I think they're jawed hoppers. Yeah. And I've really wanted to maybe buy a pair of these, but if I can make them, that even works better for me because I can customize everything I need. Stephanie found me this beautiful 1970s pattern that is right up my alley with these big poofy sleeves. Going down, I could add ruffles and stuff to make this very gunny sacks like. And those were $1.50 each. And the last thing I got, this is a bag of bows. I picked up this bag of bows because my family does not have enough green bows in our Christmas assortment right now. We reuse our bows every year and somehow the green bows have been the ones that have gotten destroyed. So I picked these up for my family so we all don't have to fight over the green bows. And it was a dollar for the bag, so great pricing. Before I move on, I just wanna show, of course with Stephanie coming, I had her bring some patterns. As I always do, um, I always buy a bunch from Stephanie's shop anytime she comes. From one of her more recent unboxing videos, I wanted these. They're like secret pants, essentially. Um, they're really, really, really wide-legged culottes. Um, I also had her bring me this blouse. I absolutely love the shape of it. It has like a really nice um, sleeve cuff there. So I really wanted that. So I bought that from her as well. And then I also bought this uh, wedding dress pattern, even though I definitely bought it for the non wedding dress part of the pattern. I really liked the like scalloped waistline here that even though it kind of gives the illusion of a dropped waistline, it isn't an actual drop waistline because I don't like a drop waistline on me, but I love the illusion of one. And then last, I probably won't use the petticoat pattern for this. However, I've been wanting to make these little ruffled shorts for myself. I think they work great for a lot of different things, but one of the things I want to do next year is weirdly make a bunch of chub rub protection shorts that are like cute and girly and make me feel good when I wear them as opposed to being like either beige or I don't know just like kind of ugly and making me feel not good I just need the shorts to stop my thighs from touching I don't need them to do any shaping or anything like that I literally don't care and I thought these would be a cute way to accomplish that goal while still feeling really cute and girly and I had actually been looking for a pattern like that, so it worked out really well for me. We're gonna continue on with the antique mall that we went to. Alrighty, I think that's everything from the antique mall. First up, I have two bags of fake little rosettes. These are just handy to have on hand for a project. I don't have a project in mind, but I, I think next year I would like to make kind of a bunch of really cute, fun little hair pieces. Maybe I'll make a video on that. So I picked up these roses because they were a dollar each, which is actually a great price for this many little rosettes. And now I'll have a good variety to try out for hopefully making something fun in the next year. I also picked up, oh, where's the other one? I'll show the other one. They'll be stacked on each other right here, but I picked up a couple miniatures. This is a miniature little vase with a lime in it. And then somewhere, somehow, I have a plate with little tiny olives on it. Both of these I'll probably make fridge magnets, although I might leave this one. I have a miniature project planned in the future. I don't quite know yet what I'm doing for that, but I'm gonna keep this on for that. Next thing that I have is I have this beautiful fabric. There's probably a couple yards here. And I love, these are violets, and I enjoy violets for a lot of different reasons. I think they're really pretty. I like the colors, but also they are a way that queer people flagged to each other. In the olden days, when it was really not safe to be out, I mean, we still flag to each other. It just doesn't have quite the direness, I feel like, of other days. So I wanted to get this and probably make like a little blouse out of it. Violets make me happy because they make me think of my history. Next up, I have a, so I have five of these. This is a really pretty doily. I'm planning on making a really big doily piece next year. So I'm beginning my collecting. I also picked up this beautiful pink piece and then two of these daisy like green pieces that are super cute. I have plans for these next year. Don't you worry. I am not just picking up random things. The last thing I picked up is this really gorgeous pillow, not pillowcase, a tablecloth. It has these kind of like lilacs, I would say, on them. I guess you could maybe call them wisteria. I think they're more likely to be lilacs just because of the open flower center thing. I think this is really beautiful. There's enough here to make a blouse for sure. This plus a bunch of scrap fabric I have. It was $12, which is actually a pretty good price on something like this. All right, we are having a big lighting shift here. Bear with me. We've reached the point in the year where I no longer get consistent light into my apartment. So we just kind of get what we get and we don't throw a fit. My last thing that I'm gonna go into, I've gone through all my crafting supplies that I've gotten. So now we are sticking to fabric. I picked up, I tried to be pretty restrained in my fabric buying, but I did pick up still quite a bit of fabric. 
So first is everything I picked up at Mills End. I really love Mills End. I mean, you saw the tour kind of. It is such a huge facility. The first thing I got there is this Liberty of London dog print. This is a lawn by them and it has these cute little doggies on them that I absolutely adore and I'm really excited about. This was cheaper for lawn from them. Somewhere on here there's a staple with the price. This was $17.49 a yard and I got five yards of it to make a whatever dress I need or not need want to make with it and I love the light blue fabric. So this was my only silly dress find. Everything else I have solid plans for. So basically I have grown out of all my skirts for winter and so I'm gonna need some heavy wool skirts. So that's what I focused on here. This is not gonna be a heavy wool skirt. This will actually be a nice and seasonal wool skirt but I picked up this gorgeous wool. It was $26.99. I picked up I think three yards of it or maybe four I think I want to do a full circle skirt with this it's just this really lovely blue color and I'm pretty excited about it and then the last thing that I picked up there wool wise was this beautiful it's this black I would say black brown and pink fabric that's really really stunning I'm really excited about it and this will also become a skirt because like I said, my mission is I need to replace my skirt wardrobe. It's gotten real sad, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I have a big stack of wool here. I don't know what to wear in the winter if I don't have wool skirts. So it is time I get going and make these right up. Next up, this is nothing that exciting. I mean, it is really exciting. I got five yards of this, which is a huge amount of yardage. It was $15.99 yard, which just is a steal for wool. This nice quality from Pendleton. I'm going through my Pendleton stack now. This I got, I wanna make a skirt and a pair or two of pants from it. So it'll be very practical. Next up, I got this one. Stephanie says it hurts her eyes. I don't disagree, but I think something like this would be perfect with like a hot pink blouse. This was a $5.99 a yard. I think it was on sale that much because of how much it hurts people's eyes. Uh, it looks a lot subtler on camera, but trust me, this is very bright and intense in real life. This I also picked up to make a skirt. Next up, you guessed it, I picked this up to make a skirt. I did grab four yards because I think I want to make a circle skirt out of this. And it's just this really beautiful wool fabric that has a little bit of speckling in it. And I think that was $19.99. Then this next one is $24.99. And it's just this really beautiful kind of teal plaid with some purples and things like that. I just think this will fit in well with my wardrobe. And yes, you guessed it, this will become a skirt. So that is everything I bought while hanging out with Stephanie and Christina. I love both their channels linked below. I know Stephanie plans on having a video go live around the same time this one does. So be sure to check that out. And Christina has recently released a really awesome sewing video. So I'm gonna link that down below definitely check it out so I will have both linked down below and it's spooky apparently insists on saying hi she scared me but yeah that wraps up this video I hope you enjoyed subscribe and stick around if you haven't already I post every single Friday at 8 a.m pacific time and you will see lots of really great projects coming up from me so I will see you then bye <laughs>